Third is, why would they forget the cheapest deliver problem? The idea when you rate something and you say, this is how you get in, we know that in wheat, that when you say delivery of wheat, what gets delivered? Just enough good wheat mixed with bad wheat to satisfy the criteria. So over time, the system gained against the rating agencies, and they didn't pick up on this. So we have to understand that is another area. A fourth area, I believe, is that we understand debt is like cancer. If you need to reduce it, it gets worse and worse because your asset values are falling and your equity is disappearing. And the more you liquidate, the more values fall, the more debt you have to reduce. And so we have to think, is there ways to create debt that's convertible into equity based on a systemic event? If debt is convertible into equities in banks, it reduces and eliminates the moral hazard problem. And the extra cost of debt that is convertible into equity based on systemic events will be borne by the debt holders and the equity holders, or the equity holders of the firm, and they'll police more. Because if we have moral hazard problems in banks, debt holders are bailed out, and debt holders do not have to monitor. And that's a crucial problem. So we have to think of ways in which debt is convertible into equity so that the transaction cost of liquidating assets, the toxic assets that were referred to, can be remain on the banks, but the equity holders and the debt holders are now responsible for their own mess, as opposed to transferring that to society. Fifth, I think the stable value product, the idea of having deposits which are invested in risky assets or insurance contracts, annuities that promise the money back that invest in risky paper, the probability is one that they're going to fall. You can invest in risky instruments and promise someone to get their money back and never the downside. That's impossible. So yeah, those issues have to be addressed. The idea of accounting, we need a new accounting system, a system that accounts for risk. This is an opportunity at this time for the international community to say, where is risk at all on a, an accounting statement? A balance sheet is a snapshot. It doesn't say how that balance sheet is going to change. We need that. We need new ways of thinking, of providing information. It's not only disclosure or transparency, it's risk. If I am transparent, I don't understand what the bank's risk is or what, how they're thinking about the problem. It's that this termination of a new accounting system which provides risk measurement and risk attribution to the community at large. Banks have to stop thinking they're making money on fake alphas. They buy, they make money by turning over inventory. They also hold the inventory. They hold too much of the inventory. Why? It's a liquid. They make a liquidity premium. In the short run, they make accounting profits on the inventory they hold, and they report those as profits without setting up a reserve for crises at time of crisis that a liquid inventory cannot be liquidated. So my thinking in a business is do you make money turning over inventory if you sell suits, or do you make money holding suit inventory thinking that it's going to increase in value? So we have to understand what's truly profits and what is really temporary profits, but then causes huge difficulties at times of shock. Directors, trust the verify. The directors of banks should pressure the senior management to understand the risks of the entity and articulate those risks. A friend of mine told me that the risk management system at UBS Bank was a hundred pages, and they, through their authority, asked the directors if they understood what the reports were. They didn't. You couldn't. They couldn't understand the board. If you can't understand your job of monitoring the organization, then you should be penalized if you don't understand it, or you should not be compensated. You should not be hired to do it. We have to think about the monitoring side as well as the trust. Because incentives are only one part of the coin. The other half of the coin is monitoring. And incentives don't work unless there's someone who understands what incentives to provide, what pay systems to provide, because you have to monitor. And lastly, natural volatility. One, one interesting problem that I see is the central bankers, as well as government officials, 
say the economy is great. The ball, don't worry about shocks that we had. Everything is fine. But that tries to dampen volatility. If we have natural volatility in the world, then we don't know what the correct level of volatility is. But certainly it's good to have recessions from time to time. It's good to have shocks, there are many shocks, that warn people, warn people not to take risks. And every time the central bankers, like Mr. Greenspan said, the fundamentals of the economy are strong. You know, or we're going to increase interest rates at a measured pace. What does that do? It tells people, don't worry about it. Take more risk. But if the real economy, the real economics is such that we can't tame those real economics, the natural volatility is there. If we dampen it down, the consequences are essentially the same as what we did in the United States for Yellowstone National Park and the other parts of the West. Every small fire we put out, and people built homes in the park against the park, the underbrush grew. The volatility wasn't there. And then a lightning strikes hit various parts of the park, and the chaos is incredible. It burns down acres after acre. In the west of the United States now, homes, as you see on your television, are burned to the ground, vast numbers of them when you have these congregations. Why? Because we didn't let the natural volatility grow. So politicians and bank regulators should realize we need enough volatility to work people. That we're not in a world that's so sanguine and remains sanguine and calm forever that everything's going to be fine. Because you know you can tell your children, don't worry, I'm there to protect you. But when all of them call you at the same time, you know, you can't protect me. So I'll end with that.